In this Cricut tutorial for beginners, I am showing you how you can quickly and easily layer multiple colors of HTV, which stands for heat transfer vinyl, which is also known as iron on vinyl. And in the process, we're also making a super cute Cricut Christmas project. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants, your crickets and crafting channel where I show you cricket tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week. So if you are new around here and you're just trying to figure out how to use or maybe even master your cricket cutting machine, well then you may want to consider stamping that subscribe button and then ringing that little bell for all the notifications because you do not want to miss out on a single cricket minute, especially during December because around here on this channel, that just means it is the 12 days of Craftmas where not only am I bringing you you 12 new episodes, 12 new Cricut Christmas or holiday themed projects, but I'm also bringing you 12 opportunities to get registered to win a huge Cricut prize package. So not only am I giving away a Cricut maker, but I'm also giving away a Cricut Joy with the hopes that you'll pay it forward and give away one of those machines to a friend or a family member, as well as a huge StarCraft HD permanent adhesive vinyl bundle, a 30 foot roll of my favorite transfer tape, my favorite weeding tool, a squeegee tool, and some other little goodies as well. Now to get registered, it is super, super easy. Just watch these videos from the very beginning all the way up until the very end, because inside each of these videos, there's a hidden holiday or Christmas themed phrase that will be popping up one at a time. It looks a little something just like this right here. And whenever you see those pop up, just jot down that word and then keep on watching. At the very end of that video, once you have that full phrase, just text it into me if you're in the US, text it into my texting community at 502-878-7189. If you're outside of the US, just email it to me at mcpgiveaways at gmail.com. And you can get registered anytime between now and all the way up until 11.59 PM Pacific Standard Time on Christmas Day. All right, so now on to today's project, which I am so excited for because I am showing you all how to layer multiple colors of HTV. Now, you all know that I love, love, love Caesar brand HTV. Caesar Easy Weed is amazing. However, over the last few months or so, I have fallen deeply madly in love with StarCraft SoftFlex HTV. This stuff is amazing. It's super lightweight. It's not too heavy on your shirt or material or fabric. It blends in beautifully with the fabric. Some people even compare it to screen printing, the way it blends in and almost becomes like one with the fabric. And I can't say that I disagree there. It's just so cool, you guys, I love it. It also has a soft, beautiful, like matte finish to it. It applies at a lower temperature at 285 degrees for a short amount of time, which makes it much easier to apply with a household iron. And I actually made a video on that. I will link that video for you right up here, as well as at the end of this video and down in that description box below. I'm also going to be using a Cricut Easy Press. So this machine right here, again, I do have a video showing you how to do this with a household iron, and that will be linked down in that description box below and at the end of this video. In addition to that Easy Press, I'm also going to be using an Easy Press mat. I am also going to be using a Teflon sheet. Now, a Teflon sheet is somewhat optional as a cover sheet. You can also use parchment paper and it does a good job. Just in my opinion, it doesn't do as good of a job as a Teflon sheet does. I will say this though, you do definitely need a cover sheet. We're also obviously going to need something to apply all this to, right? And I'm using this apron right here. These are the absolute cutest. 143 Vinyl sells these and they actually have like an adult size like this right here, as well as a kid size. So whether you're a parent, a grandparent, an uncle, an aunt, whatever, you can have a matching apron with your little helper, which I think is just so, so, so cute. Not to mention they have a bunch of different colors to choose from. And last but not least, we're also gonna need an SVG cut file to make this Cricut Christmas magic happen, right? So let's hop over to designbundles.net and I'll show you the one that I'm using for today. 
Now, is this not the cutest thing or what? Like I love, love, love this SVG file. And I also love the price because currently at the time of filming this, it is marked down half off from $3 to $1.50. Obviously, per usual, I cannot make any promises of what that price is gonna be by the time that you watch this video and go check it out yourself. However, if you see it for $1.50, you may wanna grab that because that is such a great deal. By the way, everything, and I do mean everything that I list or mention or use will be all linked for you all down in that description box below. I even take it one step further and I even go through and try to find any like valid promo codes for those items. And I will list those for you down there as well because Y'all know I love a bargain. <laughs> Let's go ahead and hop over here to Cricut Design Space. And as you can see, I already had this file downloaded from designbundles.net and uploaded into Cricut Design Space. Now, if you are newer to this entire Cricut world and you're not entirely sure how to download SVG files, or as a matter of fact, even fonts from designbundles.net or fontbundles.net, and actually how to get those into Cricut Design Space, I got you covered. I have a video specifically on that entire process. I walk you through and hold your hand step by step by step. And I will link that video for you right up here, as well as down in that description box below. But as for this SVG file right here, the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is over here on the right hand side of this, of this page, on this layers panel. And as you can see here, there's a bunch of different layers going on here. I'm not entirely sure why some designers do it this way. Maybe it's just to give you a little bit more customization with everything, I don't know. <laughs> But as far as this goes, everything's grouped off and it looks like it's all grouped off color by color, which, which is helpful. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna select this red grouping right here. So this includes all of the red elements in this image. And so what I'm gonna do is actually turn that into one solid layer, one solid image by coming down here towards the bottom right hand corner and selecting weld. So as you can see, all of this is just one solid image now. I'm now gonna repeat that exact same process for this, this gingerbread layer right here, or this gingerbread group rather, and come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select weld. And last but not least, let's get the green elements in this image or in this design. So I have this selected, and then I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select weld. And by doing this, whenever we go to cut all this out, it's not gonna be just kind of spread all over the place, all over our, our cutting mat. This is actually gonna keep it all together where it's gonna cut out as seen here on the canvas. All right, so as we can see here, this green layer is just one solid image. It's gonna be cut out just like this on our cutting mat. The same with our gingerbread layer here and then the same as our red layer. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> our apron that we're applying this to is red. So we obviously do not wanna apply red HTV to a red apron because it basically just uh, practically disappear. <laughs> so we don't want that to happen. So let's go ahead and change this to white because I am gonna be cutting this out on white HTV instead. So I'm gonna make sure that this is selected and I'm gonna come up here towards the top left-hand corner, click this little color swatch, and we'll just change this to white like so. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and just kind of piece this back together somewhat or position it back together rather. All right, so now we're gonna to have to go about actually resizing this to fit onto our surface, right? And so to make that a little bit easier, I'm gonna click and drag over all of this and then come up here towards the top right-hand corner and select group. And that way it's just kind of holding it all together while it's here on the canvas. And that's basically it. We can basically resize it collectively as so. And it just makes it a little bit easier doing it that way, in my opinion. Now you all know I am all about templates. I love, love, love creating templates because to me, it's just the easiest way to go about resizing an image to fit perfectly onto your surface. Now, here's the thing. Some of you all may not know this, but Cricut Design Space actually has a templates category. Now, unfortunately, last time I checked, this was still not available for tablet users. Fingers crossed they actually have that fixed and um, updated soon, we'll see. So if you are using a tablet for Cricut Design Space, you may need to actually just uh, measure this out the old fashioned way to see how big you want it to be on your apron. But for today's project, I'm gonna come up here towards the top left hand corner and select templates. And as you can see, the first little category right here is aprons. So I'm gonna select that. And as you can see up here in the top left hand corner, it's asking you for the type of apron. So I'm gonna keep this as an adult full apron, like a full apron versus a half apron, right? And so they have options for an adult as well as a kid. So I'm gonna keep it as an adult. And as you can see here, it's basically just a layout of an, of an average standard sized adult apron. So I'm gonna click on our little our design here and then just drag this right over top of where our apron is. And I'll be honest with you guys, I don't really think that we need to resize this. <laughs> that, that hardly ever happens, but 
I kind of love how that looks just like that without changing anything. So that's currently almost nine inches wide and a little over nine inches tall. And I think that that looks perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and come up here towards the top right hand corner and select make it. In 99.9% .9 of cases with HTV, you are going to need to mirror your design. There's a couple little one-offs out there, but we're not gonna worry about all that right now. We're just gonna focus on this project for now. So let me come over here to the left-hand side of the page. And as you can see right here for this white layer, it's giving us the option to mirror it, which I'm gonna select right there. And just because you mirror one layer does not mean that the others are gonna be mirrored as well. So let's go ahead and select the other, the other mat and we'll mirror that one as well. And the same with this green one. And now let's come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select continue. All right, so for our base material cut settings. Now, although this is a StarCraft heat transfer vinyl, the cut setting that I'm gonna be using is the everyday iron on vinyl setting. So I'm gonna select that right here. Now, if you are using a Cricut Explore device, you could just go ahead and turn your dial over to iron on and that should be the same exact setting. However, I highly, highly recommend keeping your dial set to custom because every time that you go make a cut, that page will pop up there for you and you have so many more options that way. All right, so I am gonna go ahead and load our HTV onto our cutting mat. Now, here's the thing about HTV. Again, 99.9% .9 of the time with HTV, you wanna apply it to your cutting mat with the shiny side facing down. And that is this side right here. I hope you can tell on camera, but this is like a shinier side. It's also like a smoother, it has a little bit more of a slick feeling to it versus the opposite side. It's more of a matte, kind of a dull finish to it. And this slick shiny side, this is actually the side with the carrier sheet on it. So obviously we cannot, nor do we want to cut through this side. Instead, we're gonna be cutting it through the HTV side, which is like this more dull matte side right here. So again, shiny side facing down onto the cutting mat. And then we can go ahead and just load this into the cutting machine and get started cutting. All right, so whenever we're removing vinyl or material from your cutting mat, what I personally like to do to help prevent any damage from occurring to your material is flipping the mat over and then peeling the mat away from the vinyl instead of the other way around. Now, before we go through and do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and set our easy press and have that preheating. So we're gonna set this to about 285 degrees for about 10 seconds. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my other layer of HTV. And while that's cutting out, I'm gonna go ahead and start weeding out my first layer of HTV. All right, so we are all done weeding everything out. So I'm just grabbing my Easy Press mat right here, as well as my apron. Now, here's the thing. Moisture is the mortal enemy of HTV. We do not want any moisture residing inside of our garment whenever we apply our HTV to it. So if you've ever applied HTV to a garment and it's lifted up off of the off of the fabric shortly thereafter, or after you've washed it once or twice, it could be a few different reasons. But one of those reasons is there was moisture in the garment that didn't allow that HTV to properly adhere to the, to the garment. So we're going to actually fix that right now by preheating our garment. Now, some people can skip over this step, I do not recommend you skip over the step. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you preheat your garment first. So our easy press is already preheated. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and we're just gonna press over top of this apron. And I'm just gonna do it for about 10 seconds or so. All right, so that should be good for the most part. Now, I like to take it one step further and this purpose is twofold. What I like to do is actually fold the apron or garment, whatever you're using in half, like so. I'm just trying to get it perfectly folded in half where all the seams and everything meet. And now what I want to do is take our easy press and then apply it yet again, right here to the center of our garment or to our material. So not only is this kind of just taking that preheating to the next level, but it's also putting a crease right down the middle of our apron. And we're actually going to use that crease to line up our HTV onto it perfectly. It's really just taking out all the guesswork for us. So I'm gonna unfold this, and hopefully you can see this on camera, but there is definitely a crease running right down the center of this apron. 
Now, whenever applying HTV to a surface, what I like to do is typically start out with the largest piece first. And in that case, it is this layer right here, this white layer. Now I'm going to actually fold this in half with a sticky side facing out, of course, and try to get this folded perfectly in half. And once I do, I'm gonna put like a very light crease right down the center of this HTV. And whenever you do that, you now have a little crease down the dead center of your HTV that you can then use to line up onto this crease in the middle of your garment. Pretty cool, huh? Now, whenever it comes time to actually applying your HTV to your surface, what I like to do, especially if there are multiple pieces involved, is I like to grab another piece of the HTV, especially up here at the top. And I'm just gonna kind of position this accordingly, just like it would be in real life. And just make sure that we have the positioning where we want it to be. Now, typically whenever I'm applying HTV to something like this that you wear, I typically like to go about two or so finger widths below the collar. All right, so that should be great just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this layer right here. All right, so here's the thing. If our design was just one single layer and that was it, we would apply our easy press or our heat press at 285 degrees for about 10 seconds or so. However, we actually do not have a one layer design. We have a three layer design. And the last thing that we wanna do is apply that full 10 seconds for each of those layers. Like that is, that's no bueno, no good. We do not want that. Instead, we're gonna do what's called a tack it method. Or we're basically tacking each layer of HTV on for about two to three seconds or so, and then we're applying the next layer. And it'll make a little bit more sense here in just a second if you've never done this before. But I'm gonna go ahead and grab my easy press. And you can kind of see through the Teflon shades, it may not read that way on camera, but you wanna make sure that this easy press is covering the entire design. If it's not, then you'd wanna do one side or one half at a time and kind of do it that way. All right, so two to three seconds. All right, so that was with medium pressure. And I know that pressure is just so subjective, right? But just try to imagine applying enough pressure with your easy press that if you had a piece of paper between your easy press and your garment that you couldn't very easily anyway, yank that sheet of paper out from between the two. That's the amount of pressure that you're wanting to apply with this. So if you need to actually do this on a lower table or a lower surface, or maybe even set this up on a floor and apply the pressure that way, then by all means do whatever you need to do. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull off my Teflon sheet. And I'm going to very, very carefully peel back the carrier sheet. And the reason I say very, very carefully is because you wanna go super, super slow, making sure that none of the HTV is wanting to pull up with the carrier sheet. If that is the case, and some HTV is wanting to pull up with it, that just means you either need more pressure or more heat. All right, so, so far so good. So let's go ahead and get our next layer. And let's go ahead and just do the green for the next layer. And we're gonna cover this back up with the Teflon sheet. And again, two to three seconds of medium pressure. So for my nine inch by nine inch easy press, I'm not going to be able to get the top section of this HTV and the lower section at the same time. So I'm gonna press those separately. And whenever you're pressing your easy press onto your garment, you really just wanna kind of press down and then lift straight back up. You don't wanna be moving all over the place. You're not ironing a pair of pants, you're, you're pressing HTV. So just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my Teflon sheet again. And again, very carefully, peeling up the carrier sheet. Looking good so far, I love this. So let's go ahead and grab our next layer, which is in this case is gonna be this gingerbread layer, which I used this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous StarCraft Softflex copper HTV. I love this, like this is so pretty. All right, so again with the Teflon sheet. And again, I'm gonna press this in two different parts. So one section and then I'll move it over to the next section. Again, carefully peeling off the carrier sheet. And now we're actually gonna press for the full 10 seconds. Now, some people will actually go ahead and for that very last layer, do the full 10 seconds there. And I don't like to do that. And that's because the carrier sheet that is still on that last layer could very, very easily leave an indention into other parts of the design. So I like to even tack the very last layer and then do a full even layer of heat for the full, for the full design for the full 10 seconds. All right, so I'm gonna cover this all back up. And again, 
my easy press is is not quite as big as it needs to be for this so i'm gonna press this in two parts i love this <laughs> Now, if you all liked today's episode or if you learned something new, it would honestly mean the world to me and also just help me out so much here on YouTube. If you took two seconds and stand to that like button as well as drop a comment down in that comment section below. Also, while you're at it, if you are new around here and you're just trying to figure out how to use or maybe even master your Cricut cutting machine, well, you may want to consider stamping that subscribe button and then ringing that little bell for all the notifications because I put out new Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week. And you do not want to miss out on a single Cricut Minute. Like I said earlier, especially during December, because around here during December, it is the 12 days of Craftmas. And at this point in the video, you should have all of the pieces of the puzzle. You should have all of the words in that hidden Christmas or holiday themed phrase. And so if you are in the US, go ahead and text that into me right now at 502-878-7189. If you are outside of the US, email it to me at mcpgiveaways at gmail.com. And remember, you have up until 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Christmas Day to get those entries into me. And also do not forget to go back and watch any of those Craftsmas videos that you may have missed already. I will have a linked playlist at the very end of this video as well as down in that description box below. Thank you all so, so much for watching today's episode. It truly, truly, truly means the absolute world to me. And I am so extremely grateful for each and every single one of you all. And until next time, stay crafty.